interval training for enduro racing. So the problem with interval training for enduro racing is you've got so many different types of interval training, okay? Or people have different uh, versions of what high intensity interval training is. You've got some people who are saying like it's F45 or it's CrossFit or it's, you know, jump on the rowing machine and do five minute blocks. Some people are saying it's just put rest periods into your workout. Um, so you've got all of these uh, different ways of doing interv interval training or different versions. And the problem is as a racer, when you've got all of this these different versions of interval training and what you need to do is you get confused, right? You're like, shit, what do I actually do? And when you're in that spot, then you start to doubt what you're actually doing. You're always second guessing the training that you're doing. When you're second guessing the training that you're doing, you're probably gonna find it hard to be consistent and to be motivated because you're gonna be feeling like you're wasting your time um, every time you go into the, the gym because you're gonna be like, shit, am I actually doing the right thing for my riding? So what I'm gonna do in this video is just make it super clear for you on how to perform interval training correctly um, so that you get the biggest transfer over to your riding and racing. You can just be confident in what you're doing. So first thing that you need to know though is that there's two different types of cardio, okay? There's what we call aerobic training and then there's what we call anaerobic training. So aerobic training or aerobic energy system is the energy system we use when we have a consistent intensity for a long period of time, okay? So it's like, think about like going for a run for an hour, think about going for a swim for an hour, think about going for a walk for an hour, okay? That's our um, aerobic system. The other energy system we have is called our anaerobic energy system. So this is the energy system we use when we have a very short, sharp, intense effort. So think about like a 100 meter sprint, Think about um, like doing a very hard effort on the rowing machine for a very short period of time. When we're going absolutely flat out as hard as we can possibly go, that's our anaerobic energy system. Now, when we're doing an enduro race, so let's say a three-hour enduro, we're using both of those energy systems, okay? We're using our aerobic because we're moving our body for a three-hour period, but there's lots of periods of anaerobic because like going on a hill climb, like trying to get the bike up up a big hill, that takes 100% effort. It's very intense, okay? That's why you, you get you get to the top of a hill climb, you're like, oh, like I got through that bit and you need a little bit of recharge time. Or it could be going over a big log or through a tough um, rock garden that requires a lot of effort. That's gonna use more anaerobic. So we need to have both. The way that you train your aerobic energy system is by doing longer distance stuff, okay? And the best way to do that is just doing longer rides on the weekend. Get out on the weekend if you're an enduro rider and you're doing three hour races, go and ride for two or three hours on the weekend um, at one, you know, in one ride. And that's gonna to help to build your aerobic system. The other energy system, which is what this video is gonna focus on, is the aerob uh, sorry, anaerobic energy system. Okay, those short, sharp, intense bursts of training. So, the whole goal here is we wanna teach your body to be able to go very hard for a very short period of time, to be able to recover and recharge very, very quickly, and then be able to go hard again. Okay, so like if you're racing, let's say you're doing maybe like a grassroots hard enduro, you might go uh, you might go over like tough hill climb, right? Really tough hill climb, really zaps the energy out of you. You're breathing heavy, you've been hanging on, you're huffing and puffing, you're hot and sweaty. You get to the top of the hill climb, then you might have a little bit of single trail before you get to the next section. Maybe the next section's a rock garden, okay? You've got between the top of that hill climb and that next rock garden to recover. If you're not recovered, you're probably going to be sitting around on the bike a lot longer than you should be before you get ready to go through that next rock garden. So your body's going intense effort on the hill climb, it's resting very quickly on the single trail, and then it's going intense effort again on the rock garden. That's what we're trying to get your body used to. Okay, so the way that we do that is, or a way to do that is through interval training. Now, how do we actually implement this into the gym or into our training so it transfers over to your racing? The whole goal here with our interval training is not to be doing lots of work. It's not to be doing lots of volume. It's not to be racking up a whole heap of Ks or a whole heap of hours with your training. The goal here is intense or very high intense effort. Okay, and the way we get very high intense effort is for shortening the period of time that we work. Okay, so if I get you on the rowing machine or you jump on the rowing machine for 10 minutes, flat out, the effort that you can hold for 10 minutes is gonna be much lower than the effort that you could hold for a minute, okay? And the effort you can hold for a minute is gonna be much uh, lower than the effort that you can hold for 30 seconds, okay? So the shorter we make the distance, the shorter we make our intervals with our training, the more intense those efforts are gonna be. And the more intense those efforts are gonna be, the better the return on time we're gonna get from the gym and the better the transfer we're gonna get over to our riding and racing, okay? So how do we map out our interval training? 
We want to use short, sharp bursts, okay? So we can use 15 second intervals, 30 second intervals, 45 second intervals, and minute intervals, okay? Once we start getting like over, up over the minute towards like the two minute range plus for our intervals, the intensity is going to drop right off. Okay, so again, the whole goal of the intervals is we're not training duration. That's what our long rides on the bike are for, to build our aerobic system. We're trying to build our anaerobic energy system. And we do that through short, sharp bursts of high intensity. Okay, so anyway, you can have anywhere around that one minute, up to that one minute mark. From, I would say from probably 20 seconds to a minute. Now, the important thing with the interval work is you want to have roughly a one-to-one -one rest, rest ratio, work rest ratio. What this means is if you're doing a one minute interval, have a minute of rest. If you're doing a 30 second interval, have 30 seconds of rest after each interval. The reason that the rest is important is because that's what allows you to recharge to give an intense effort for the next round. If you do a one minute interval and then have 10 seconds rest and then try and go for a minute again, your body is not recharged enough. So what that means, if it's not recharged enough and hasn't had enough time to recover, when you go into the next interval, it's not gonna be very intense because you've carried too much fatigue from the previous round. And if you're carrying too much fatigue from the previous round and the intensity's dropped off, we've just defeated the whole purpose of doing the interval training. Because the, again, the purpose of the interval training is to train our intensity. That's the thing that we want, we're trying to improve and trying to get better to help us through those tougher sections on the track. We're not trying to accumulate a whole heap of volume and get a whole heap of Ks and spend hours and hours and hours on the rowing machine or on the cycle bike. Our gauge of progress is intensity. Okay, so... If you're used to doing longer workouts or longer intervals, what you're gonna find when you do the shorter intervals is you may be doing a lot more resting and a lot less work, but you're gonna find it's actually a lot harder. And the reason that it's a lot harder is because you're operating at a higher intensity. You're working a lot more uh, than what you have previously. This is why for a lot of riders, their cardio work and their interval work doesn't transfer over to their riding and racing because they don't train the intensity. A tough hill climb might only last you 30 seconds. It's 30 seconds of all our effort. But if all of your intervals are five or 10 minutes long, the transfer from your training off the bike is not gonna serve you very well for those tougher sections on the track. So ultimately, summary, there's two types of cardio, aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic, try and get that done on the bike by doing longer rides. Anaerobic, use short, sharp uh, interval training during the week with plenty of rest periods in between to make sure that you can work on the intensity and not working on the volume of training.